Colgate Tooth Powder for a breakfast sweet. And Halo Shampoo to glorify your hair. Present Don Amici as the star of Random Harvest in your theater of romance from Hollywood. <laughs> Tonight, Colgate Tooth Powder and Halo Shampoo bring you Jane Tilton's superlative story, Random Harvest. Appearing in tonight's theater of romance is one of America's favorite stars of screen and radio, Don Amici. And so do you. From Colgate Tooth Powder and Halo Shampoo comes our play, Random Harvest, and our star, Don Amici. I must have lost my footing on the pavement and hit my head when I fell. When I came to, a man was standing over me. Take it easy there, no bones broke. I have a train to catch. I'll be late. A cop is going to call a doctor. Best lie still the doctor has to look at. Me. By my clothes, they're, they're all muddy. I took a fair spill, you did. Look here, thanks, that bother calling, but I'm perfectly all right now. Won't do for me to miss that train. Oh, what station were you headed for? Perhaps I can give you a lift. Well, that's very kind of you. My train leaves from Victoria Station. Victoria? That's in London, man. Well, of course it's in London. Where else would it be? Well, sir, the cinch, it wouldn't be here in Liverpool. Liverpool? Yes. The accident must have addled your wits a bit. Oh, but don't let it worry you. Your head will clear up soon enough. I stood up feeling dizzy. Three questions were burning in my mind. Who, where, and when? Where was evidently Liverpool? What was I doing in Liverpool? And who was I? I felt in all my pockets looking for some identification. Nothing there. A few coins and treasury notes, a little over four pounds. I stopped at the news agent to buy a paper and got my second shock. Feeling a bit giddy, sir? No. No, just uh, something I haven't seen in the paper here. Just notice. Why, it's me. What's that, sir? It's me. I'm supposed to be dead. Yes, the death notice was my own. The name leapt up on the page that had been printed in red ink. Family gives up hope for Rainier. Eldest son of industrialists believed to have perished in German prison camp in 1940. I glanced at the top of the page and saw the date. May 15th, 1945. My name was Charles Rainier. I was in Liverpool. The year was 1945. I now knew three important things. Who, when, and where. And so I went home to Stoughton. It was a bad time for a prodigal son. My father died that night. And because I could think of no plausible excuse for not doing so, I took over the management of Rainier's work. Like any blossoming typhoon, I spent my first morning interviewing the secretary. Yes, my last employer was a writer. You're not a local girl, are you, Miss Hansen? No, I'm not. I'm... I'm a Londoner. And you read the potential papers? It's a habit I got into. I used to travel about the country a great deal. Well, then you know about... About your sudden return after being given up for dead? Yes, yes, I read all about it. But really, you shouldn't have let me see such an unflattering picture. Well, thank you, but I was going to say there's more to the story of my absence than the papers printed. If you take this job as my secretary, you'll have to know about it. And you think I might do? Well, if you don't mind playing nursemaid to a mind that's not quite all there. I'm afraid I don't quite understand you, Mr. Oh, it's nothing alarming. Such an amnesia. Several years of my life I can't account for. It will come back. You mustn't try to fall. You make me feel much better than somehow. I keep thinking about that other life of mine, those hidden years, and feeling I must have lost something there. You'll find me quite irritable at times. I shall try and put up with it, Mr. Good. Then the job is yours. I don't know what I should have done without her. When I would get into my desperate mood, 
always try and remember just talking to her for a while would calm me down. And she was clever, too. Too clever to stay a secretary the rest of her life. Yet I, I didn't want to lose her. And then quite suddenly one day an idea came to me. We were sitting at lunch in a little restaurant. One of the most resounding victories of the national elections was that of Charles Rainier, the new member of parliament for Five Oaks, who takes over the seat left vacant by the death of his father. Young Rainier's qualities of leadership are expected to carry him swiftly to the forefront of national politics. Mm. Who wrote that pack of rubbish? But it's all true, Charles. I'm so excited. You might even be the next prime minister. I don't, I don't want to be prime minister. Believe me, it means nothing to me. But Charles, you'll make it mean something. I know you will. You know, there's more to this political game than just holding down a seat in parliament. How do you mean? Cynthia. Yes, sir. You once told me you'd never marry for love. Uh, what did you mean by that? Why, simply that I was once so very much in love with a man that there'll never be any other for me, that's all. And that's all done with? Dead and buried? It's all done with. But if there were a marriage you could make without love, based on mutual respect, a kind of working partnership, would you consider that kind of marriage? I might. I never ask anything of you. Just that, well, we're both sort of in the same boat. And we make such a good working team. Now with this parliament thing, I seem so anxious to make a go of it. And you need someone to play hostess for all the parties you'll have to give and entertain diplomats, wives, a key. Oh, don't misunderstand me. I know how important these things are. It, it seems so very strange that you've chosen me. Well, believe me, Cynthia, if it weren't for those things in my past, it, if it weren't for that terrible racking doubt in the back of my mind about those lost years. Yes, if you married for love and suddenly woke up one morning and remembered you were rarely in love with someone else, would be rather embarrassing, wouldn't it? Not even fun. No, I'm not trying. I'm just trying to keep from crying. My God, I'm I'm terribly sorry. No, Charles, I'm happy, really. I'd be delighted to marry you. <laughs> No one ever suspected that the marriage could be. That Cynthia had loved once, lost, and never loved again. And that I was only half a person whose real love lay buried in the darkness of five forgotten years. The memory of those years returned slowly, main here, conversation there, painfully retrieved from the shadows. A random harvest. It began at a concert of music. Suddenly a word flashed into my mind. I said it aloud. Melbury. Okay, Charles. Nothing. Look, Cynthia. Okay, Charles. Do you mind very much sitting this out alone? I just remembered something I must do. Of course, Charles. Go right again. I walked up the aisle of the theater, feeling rather dizzy. Outside, I waved down a cab, and it was just after one o'clock when we reached the market square of Melbury. Uh, pull up here, driver, will you? Right, Governor. Uh, you there, Bobby? Yes, sir. Looking for someone? Yes, the hospital. Where is the hospital? You mean the new one at the old one, sir? Well, the old one, I expect it. On the old uh, big gates and the high wall. Mm, it don't sound much like either of them. You wouldn't be meaning the insane asylum, would you? <laughs> I won't let you talk like that. You're not a failure. Why, I'm sure if you... If you could... If I was. Go on. Say it. I can take it. Not even a loving wife cares to tell her husband that a breath of trouble, I mean unpleasing breath, is hampering his success. The wise thing to do is use Colgate tooth powder. You see, anyone can be the victim of that breath of trouble. It happens to thousands without their knowing. Robs a girl of romance. 
perks a man's business and social standing. Don't gamble with your popularity. Do this. Brush your teeth night and morning and before every day with Colgate Tooth Powder. The Colgate Tooth Powder cleans your breath as it cleans your teeth. Yes, scientific tests prove that Colgate Tooth Powder in seven cases out of ten instantly stops unfreezing breath that originates in the mouth. And when it comes to cleansing, money can't buy a dentifrice that will clean your teeth better or quicker than Colgate Tooth Powder. Remember the name, Colgate Tooth Powder, with the accent on powder. And now, Colgate Tooth Powder and Halo Shampoo bring you the second act of Random Harvest. Starring Don Amici. The insane asylum. As the policeman in Melbury said those words, suddenly, vividly, I began to remember what had happened there three years ago. And as I remembered, I began actually to relive those forgotten experiences. I wasn't sitting there in the taxi any longer, I was running. Running out the tall iron gates of that asylum and down the hill to the village. A siren screamed out in the night. I felt like a hundred animals desperately seeking cover. I saw a policeman turning a corner just ahead of me and ducked into the nearest shop. Excuse me, Jerry. while I wait on this man. Of course. Uh, what can I do for you, sir? Uh, cigarettes, please. Go for it. I keep those in the back, sir. Wait here, please. Thank you. She's going to break somebody. She knows where you're from. What's that? She knows you're an escape patient, I mean. You can walk out of here with me if you like. With you? Yes. They won't be looking for a man walking with a woman. That hospital uniform is just like any other army uniform. Well, that's very kind of you. Well, come along, then. Hi. You sort of dizzy. Lean on me if you like. Well, there's, uh, there's nothing wrong with me. <coughs> just, just not being able to remember things at all. I didn't think you looked dangerous. Why did you run away? <coughs> I don't know. I, I had many real plans. <coughs> this is like that cough, old boy. <coughs> not coming down with flu, are you, on top of everything? I, I don't think so. It's just this cough and a little weak. You better get in out of this rain. Look, why not come up to my place and dry yourself out? Well, thanks, but I, I don't want to get you in touch. You won't. By the way, what's your name? Well, that's one of the things I, I don't remember. So don't let it worry you. There's always Smith. <laughs> Well, Smithy, how do you feel now? Oh, terrible. How did I get here? You've had the flu. You were delirious most of the time. And what's this place? This, this is a hotel. I live here, too. Oh, well, look up. I'd better go back to the hospital. Is that what you really want to do? No, but I, I, I can't hide out here. I... I haven't any money, and besides, it, it isn't fair to you. Oh, now, stop that. It's not costing a penny. The theater's being closed by the epidemic anyway, so I haven't a thing else to do but play nurse to you. Well, you're, you're an actress? Yes, I am. Do you mind? Oh, no. No, of course not. That's good. I think I might be able to get you a job with a company as soon as you're well enough to work. Oh, I, I'm no actor. I'm sure of that much. Oh, there are other jobs in the theater besides acting. Yes. Why are you taking all this trouble over me? Why, Smithy, don't you know? It's because I've fallen for you. Hook, line, and sink. When I was on my feet again, I took the job that was offered. It was the only way to pay back what I owed her. I fully intended to go back to the hospital when that was done. But then I realized quite suddenly that I no longer wanted to regain my memory. She had fallen for Smith, and I wanted to continue being Smith. Because I had fallen in love with her, too. 
I no longer cared what might be hidden in my past. I lived for the present and for the future. With her. Ask a lot of questions at the registry office. What sort of questions? Well, they might ask you one question I never had. And that is, if you've ever been married before. Oh, of course I haven't. How can you be sure, old boy, with that awful memory of yours? Oh, that's right. How can I? Well, don't worry. I'll take a chance on it if you will. And so we were married at St. Clement's Church, Vale Street in London. For our honeymoon, we went to Sussex and to the cottage there. And there, in the peace and quiet of that beautiful countryside, I made a discovery. I could write. I wrote our story. But it wasn't just the story of a man who had forgotten his past. I tried to make it the story of a whole world emerging from the dark shadow of the war and building a new life for itself. When I'd finished it, I sent it to a publisher. Dear Mr. Smith, I have just finished reading your manuscript and would like to meet you in person to discuss terms for its early publication. Would you find it convenient to run down here to Liverpool on, say, Wednesday next? Would I find it convenient? My sister left. Oh, darling, I wish I could go with you. Oh, but of course you're going with me. Oh, no, 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 Smith, we must be practical. We haven't much money left. Oh, now. I'll get the old chap in advance. All the same, I think I'd better stay here. I'm afraid we might decide to move to London or something. I wanted to live here at this cottage where we've been so happy. Yes, I know. There's something right about our being together here. Here's where my life began with you and where my future goes on with you. But there's nothing else, Paul. Oh, darling, darling, forgive me for saying so. But I hope you'll never remember. And so do I, darling. Oh, Paul, I love you so much. I love you too, old boy. Yeah. That's the first time you've called me old boy in weeks. I know. I'm dropping it. Now that I'm no longer a road company actress, I don't have to talk like one. I can impersonate anybody else. Even the wife of a successful author. <laughs> <laughs> All of you fools. <laughs> well, I do love you so. You will hurry back to me, won't you, darling? Oh, you hardly know that I've been away. I got to Liverpool early the next morning. It was raining. A bus skidded toward me. I lost my footing and fell. And when I came to, the past had returned. But the future was lost. That's the story, Cynthia. I'm sorry it's that way. At least now you know. Charles, what did she look like? Oh... Nothing very remarkable. Slightly reddish hair. She's about the color of yours, but done very simply. I suppose she looked rather like you, as a matter of fact. Unconsciously, that may be why I was drawn to you. What are you going to do now? I've got to find her. And make it all up to her somehow. I'll never rest till I How will you go about it? Why, I suppose I'll go back there to the cottage and stuff, first of all. She won't be there, of course, but I might find a clue there. Maybe someone in the village can help you. Well, if anyone in Sussex knows, Mrs. Denver's will. Mrs. Denver? Yes, we left the cottage from her. Oh, she'll be surprised to see you, I dare say. Oh, yes. It seems strange to be going back there. Strange and rather frightening. Suppose you're very surprised to see me. No, Mrs. Smith. I always knew you'd come back sometime. Well, I can't explain what happened, Mrs. Denver. It's too long a story, but... But you must tell me what happened after I went to Liverpool that day. Well, Mrs. Smith, your wife stayed on in the cottage for a few days. Then one day she left quite suddenly. It was after reading something in the newspaper. There was an ad there for a secretary, and she decided to go and apply for it. And she never came back? No, sir. Nor do I know where she went to. The cottage has stood empty ever since. I see. Mrs. Denver. Yes, Mrs. Smith? Would it be asking too much? Would you let me have the keys to the cottage? I'd, I'd just like to go in and look at it again. I know it sounds like a strange request, but... No, not strange at all. 
here. And stay as long as you like. Cut across my garden. It'll be only a few steps that way. Thank you, Mrs. Bender. Paula. Oh, Smith, you do know. You do, you do. Well, you've changed back again. I, I, I mean, you're all different. I told you I could impersonate anybody, remember? The wife of a budding author named Smith? Or the wife of the great Charles Ring? As long as the husband is you. Oh, darling. Darling, how could I have been so blind? Why didn't you tell me? I couldn't, my dear. I couldn't. You wouldn't have believed me. The doctor told me you'd have to find it out in your own way, in your own good time. Oh, Smithy, Smithy, it's not true. Tell me it's not too late. Oh, of course not, darling. Remember what I said when I left here at the Liverpool that day? Well, that still goes. You'll hardly notice I've been away. <laughs> Amici, star of the Robert Tallman adaptation of Random Harvest, tonight's presentation of the Colgate Tooth Powder and Halo Shampoo Theater of Romance, will return to our microphone in just a moment. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello, it's a shampoo that glorifies your hair. So, hello, everybody. Hello. Use Halo Shampoo if you want naturally bright and beautiful hair. The soap shampoos leave a film on your hair. But Halo contains no soap, therefore leaves no dulling soap film. The very first time you use Halo, you'll notice your hair glistens in all its natural brilliance. The deep, full, natural color and luster come sparkling through like sunshine through a clean window pane. And remember, even in the hardest water, Halo makes oceans of rich, fragrant lather. Halo quickly carries away loose dandruff, grease, and dirt. Needs no lemon or vinegar rinse because Halo leaves no dulling soap film. Nothing to hide your hair's natural beauty. Say hello to Halo and goodbye to dulling soap film. Use Halo on your children's hair, too. Get Halo shampoo at any cosmetic counter. Remember, Halo glorifies your hair. So hello, everybody, hello, hello, shampoo, hello. For his appearance in tonight's theater of romance, Colgate Tooth Powder and Halo Shampoo express their thanks to Don Amici. will soon be seen in So Goes My Love, the Skirball Manning production for Universal Pictures. Thanks, Don, for a wonderful job. Thank you, Frank, and I was glad to be in the theater of romance. And I'd like to express my thanks to Lorene Tuttle in the new role that brought so much fame to Greer Garden. Incidentally, regular listeners to the Theater of Romance will hear an awfully good show next Tuesday night. Your double sponsors, Colgate Tooth Powder, Halo Shampoo, have a double treat. A great story and a great performer. It's Next Time We Love and stars the irrepressible Joan Blondell. Good night and good listening. Colgate Tooth Powder and Halo Shampoo Bulletin for the Future. Next week, Charles Bandit's production of Theater of Romance brings you Next Time We Love with Joan Blondell to be followed by Warner Brothers' great story, The Hard Way, starring two of Hollywood's most brilliant performers, Ida Lucino and Robert Alder. Keep a date with Theater of Romance for all the weeks to come. You will always hear your favorite stars. These presentations of Theater of Romance come to you because of your enthusiastic recognition of Colgate Tooth Powder for a breast of sweet and Halo Shampoo to glorify your hair. This is your host, Frank Graham, saying goodnight and wishing you love, happiness, and romance. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.